Anthony Edwards has received praise to the highest degree. Some call him the next Michael Jordan, some call him the future face of the NBA, and some just aren't buying into it. In Anthony's last five games, he's shooting 33% from the field and 32% from three-point land while averaging 20 points, seven assists, and six and a half rebounds. These numbers are dangerously low compared to some of what we saw in the first two series. And the Wolves are currently being backed into a corner as they're down two games on the road going back to Dallas. This is concerning for a few reasons, but should Wolves fans panic, and more importantly, should Anthony Edwards fans panic? Well, not necessarily. Edwards is just 22 years old and has already reached the Western Conference Final with his team's first real healthy season. If you guys remember last season when they lost to the eventual champions, Denver, they were very unhealthy during that series. But let's just compare Ant-Man to some of the other NBA legends at their ages. At 22 years old, Michael Jordan was coming off a rookie campaign where he would shock your mom and dad and everyone in 1986. He averaged 28 points that rookie year, six rebounds and six assists. And as fans, we expected the greatness to persist. However, just 18 games into that season, Michael would break his foot and miss 64 games. The front office asked him to sit out as the record they had was 30 and 52, but as the seventh seed, they did make the playoffs and Michael Jordan had other plans. He'd suit up, but unfortunately the plans didn't go as he expected as he was swept by the eventual champions in the first round. The Boston Celtics defeated them three to zero. However, MJ didn't go down without a fight. He'd average 43 points a game during that series but still at the end of the day he lost and need i remind you there was about five less teams in each division so if you're looking at a 30 and 52 record as terrible and making the playoffs just remember up until about 2003 if you won at least 30 games you were in the hunt for the playoffs at 22 years old lebron james had dominated the nba averaging 27 points seven rebounds and six assists at night trailblazing the Cavs all the way to the NBA Finals before they were swept by Tim Duncan and company. The point of bringing up two of the greatest players, or maybe two of the best players of all time, is that while they were great, they still struggled at times while they were youthful, while they were young. For it is very normal to struggle in your youth, and while the older guys are just winning NBA championships, it's very easy for them to take advantage of the knowledge and the foresight that they obtain. You guys have to remember Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, these guys were winning three championships at a time, three MVPs at a time. Then the Tim Duncan and the Greg Popovich, whatever, however you want to define them. Those Spurs teams, they, were, they won four or five championships together. Part of the game is losing. It's very rare that we see someone so young come out and just take the league by storm like Ant is. Having said this, I'd like to break down a few pros and cons I've seen throughout the last 10 games, and these are the games that matter. In the regular season, he can average 40, he can average 60 for all I care. It doesn't matter if you don't perform in the postseason. We'll start with the cons and then we'll move to the pros, and then we'll wrap this thing up saying, should you panic, should you not? For the cons, I think Anthony is settling a lot for bad shots and passing up open ones. He said it himself in his postgame interview following that game two loss that he's not taking the best advantage. And he also was found saying that he's making the right play every time, but maybe the right play is just to shoot it. And I couldn't agree more. We see a lot of people blaming Rudy Gobert for last night's loss. But if your star player is shooting six for 24 or five for 19 or any of the shooting splits he's had the last couple nights, if that is the case, it's just not a mix for something that's going to be a victory unless everyone else does their part. Like Jaden McDaniels has 20 and Carl Anthony Towns has 20 and Rudy's blocking shots and grabbing rebounds. It's just very hard for the team to win if the number one man, the number one, the face of the franchise isn't pulling his part. So for Cat to be struggling last night and for Anthony Edwards to be struggling last night, I don't think it's very fair to blame this loss on Rudy. I don't know if Anthony would ever admit that it's getting to him or not, but outside noise, uh, it definitely can can be mentally draining. If every morning you wake up, and, and I don't know if Anthony's a social media user, he is younger compared to some of the other pros in the sport. If you're on social media, you're seeing Anthony Edwards is the next Michael. Is it Michael Edwards? Is it Anthony Jordan? These are things that you're seeing. Um, it's just, it's, it's the way that social media works. It's the way that it's branded. And not to mention that after you knock off the NBA champions, you are the head that everyone wants to hunt. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. It's not Anthony's fault, but youth plays a big part as a con. You're playing against Kyrie Irving, who is an NBA champion, and Luka Doncic, a man who has taken some pretty rough teams to some pretty great playoff runs. And now Luka is an amazing sporting cast. Jason Kidd's dialing in as a defensive head coach. He 
made some great calls. I was very proud of last night. The Mavs have just clearly shown championship aspiration. Last night, uh, when Kyrie Irving misses two free throws, they, they're down 105 to 103. They don't even blink. It, the score goes from 105 to 103 in favor of Minnesota to 108 to 103, still in favor of Minnesota. They come back down. Kyrie Irving knocks down a three-pointer. A young team would be so fixated on that and so frustrated on that, but the Mavericks, who haven't even been in the you know finals conversation for a long time, they are just showing their age and showing their wisdom. Uh, and then Anthony's showing his age by struggling when he's being blitzed or double teamed in his own regard. I think he's making a good job, uh, you know, facilitating and getting his team involved. We will talk about that when it comes to the pros. But as of right now, as the stats show, the shots uh, and the shot selection, it's been very rough. Moving on to the pros, while Anthony has not done great uh, for most of the shooting splits, I will have to say I got to give him a lot of credit for hitting the shots when they matter. If we go back to that game seven and game six in Denver, uh, you guys will remember Anthony hits insane, timely three point buckets in those games. Um, and even, you know, last night he he's hitting some big shots when they matter most. Uh, a pro and a con kind of is that he's working himself overtime on defense. I would like for someone else to get the Kyrie matchup for some of the minutes. Uh, he, he won't admit it, but you can just tell he is gassed and he is very, very drained. Another pro for Ant is that he's been rebounding and passing the ball extremely well for the times he's been struggling on offense. Uh, he's been doing great with that. And as a vocal re leader, he's been very, very excellent uh, just leading his guys. I love in the Minnesota locker room. Uh, no one's too old for correction. Uh, if a 22-year-old is telling a 10-year pro what's going on and they're listening, clearly Ant-Man's doing something right. Another thing I like about Anthony Edwards in this series and the Denver Nuggets series especially, when his three-point shot is rolling, he's doing a great job of hunting the pick and roll and taking that, stroking that thing. Pause. I know. I just had to say it. He's stroking that thing with with authority, man. Pause. Again, pause. Pause all over the place, but he, he's doing a really, really great job of that. So if you're a Minnesota fan, do you panic? I don't think so. You were down three to two against the defending champions. Do I, do I say that again? Defending champions. And you whooped their ass at home or for you on the road, but in Denver's house, you came in their house, you were down 20 in game six or game seven, and you won. Third quarter, down 20, and you won. Biggest Biggest dividend at halftime in Game 7 history. You did that. Do not panic. Go win Game 3. Go maybe win Game 4. If you drop Game 5, it's fine. But you don't panic. Should Dallas be favored in this series at this rate? Yes. A hundred times yes. But if you're a Mavs fan, if you're an Anthony Edwards fan, do not fear. Just hope that he does well. Uh, the shots he's getting, if they're falling, this is a completely different series, guys. Um, they, they, these have been two very close losses. It's not like you're getting blown out by 30 or 40. It's not like it's the Denver series where one night you blow them out by 30, next night they blow you out by 45, whatever. It's not like that. So what do you guys think? What do you make of this? What do you make of Anthony Edwards' struggle? If you made it this far, I appreciate your support as always. Have a great rest of your day. Stay happy, help, and blessed. Peace.